Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Okay, so today's video is one that I have been wanting to film for a while. I feel like I I often I feel like a lot of booktubers and, you know, book influencers do. I feel like we we have like our favorite books and we kind of repeat those in our recommendation videos and I do that anyways. I feel like if I'm going to do a recommendation video, I want it to be like what I what are my best in that trope or genre, subgenre or whatever. But that means that there are a lot of great books or at least really really good books that I don't mention very often unless you either like watch my vlogs or things like that. So today's video is all about some historical romances that I don't talk about enough. So some of these are either books in a series or they're books that were maybe like four, four and a half stars, like not quite a full five star read, or they just don't really fit into a recommendation video. But I find myself not ever talking about them and I want to because I think these are really great books. I've enjoyed every single book in the stack. Some of them are all time favorites I just haven't talked about in a while. Some of them are books that just really just were a good time reading for some reason or another and yeah so let's just go ahead and get into it so the first book that i want to recommend is probably not surprising it is a mary bellog book and i decided to go with slightly tempted this is book four in the bedouin saga now mary bellog is an author who has a very distinct writing style that is very different from a lot of contemporary historical romance authors she is still writing today and i love her books so much but they are very slow moving they're slow building stories and she really packs a lot of words in there to paint a very beautiful detailed emotive feeling in her books and I personally love that but I can see how if you're used to more of like a Tessa Dare type of writing style that's very like sharp witty snappy gets to the point right right away she might be hard for you to get into but if you find yourself just really really wanting to get immersed in a love in a romance that's full of like longing and pining and has layers to the to the emotional development of the characters like i would highly recommend her so this is probably my favorite book in the series so it's it's not really surprising that it's in this video but i hesitate to recommend any books individually in this series because i do think that they're better read as a as a series in order but all that being said, let me tell you what this book is about. So this book is about Lady Morgan. She's one of the Bedouin children, and she is just this rare beauty. And our hero, Gervais, is an earl, and he has uh, some beef with the Bedouins, I guess. So when he sees Morgan, he is just have this like light bulb moment when he is like, I have an idea that I will ruin her, I will get her to fall in love with me, and then I will like destroy her. You know. This is a very typical historical romance plot, like this is in a lot of Elisa Braden's. It's not uncommon for a rakish gentleman to see a young woman of a family he's got a problem with and try to use her for revenge. So that's not new here. But what I felt like was really beautifully done here was watching them actual their process of falling in love. It was very gradual, it was very subtle, and you could really see the hero fight against like his better judgment or his better, you know what he thought was better like he was not going to fall in love with her but of course like he does and I felt like it was just a really beautiful process it takes quite a while like this book spans many years of their relationship before they get to their happily ever after there's some heartbreak there's some things that happen with the family the Bedouin family and it's just a very very satisfying and fulfilling story and it's largely that because of the hero this couple has a really powerful physical connection and chemistry but watching the hero transform because of his love for Lady Morgan was just like one of my favorite things that I've ever read and I adore this book. I feel like for me this is some uh, is is probably one of the books that when I think about Mary's writing I think about this book and how beautifully and perfectly well done it was in here. I just thought it was fantastic. I adored it so much. So changing pace a little bit to something that is more fun, a little bit a little bit on the historical rom-com side is How to Be a Wallflower by Eloisa James. This is her newest release and this one was very very fun. It had a little bit of a of a different, um, not really like slapstick, but it did have some really comedic setups in the plot, and I thought it was just so much fun to read. So the book opens with our heroine Cleo, whose grandfather, her rich, wealthy, titled grandfather, is determined that she is going to come out, have a season, and she's going to get married off. 
but she doesn't want to do that at all. So her plan is to go to this costume emporium and have this really hideous wardrobe made for her so that when she goes out into society, no gentleman in their right mind will want to have her. Now, of course, at the Costume Emporium is where she meets the hero, who is an American man, Jacob, and he <laughs> wants to buy out this Costume Emporium, and Cleo does not want him to, and so they kind of are at odds in that way. And there is some really good banter in here. There is a little bit, not enemies to lovers, but a little bit of rivals to lovers in here, I would say. And I really, really liked how they worked out a deal where she would pick out, like, clothes for him, and he was going to pick out her really terrible wardrobe. So this book was really fun. This couple had great chemistry. I thought this was a very lighthearted, very fun, just like if you're looking for a fun, happy escape for the weekend or whatever, I would recommend this. It also has like a tie into the couple that is in My American Duchess, which was really fun. Okay, now this book is Reckless by Amanda Quick. This is actually the first Amanda Quick book that I had read. I did vlog all about this. And it is definitely a little bit of an older school historical romance, but I really enjoyed this. This was almost like just a complete rollicking adventure with a hero who is one of those very typical old school historical romance heroes who is very alpha and really desires the heroine, but absolutely not going to fall in love with her. And of course he does, gets all soft for her. And it was just very, very fun. I felt like the plot in here was excellently paced, excellently thought of. It was just such an enjoyable journey, but I was also really surprised when I read this at how complicated the hero's feelings for the heroine were, and how much he struggled with that, and how that was shown on page so often. I thought that was very, very intriguing, and also very ahead of its time, I think, personally. And it was just a lot of fun. So if you want something that is a good adventure, that has a lot of, like, great chemistry, and you want to give old school historical romance a try, I would highly recommend this. The basic plot of this is our heroine who has a mission basically that she needs to, she needs like a white knight to come and accomplish this mission for her mission and uh, so she ends up finding Gabriel who she sort of worshipped from the age of 16 believes him to be this white knight he's gonna be you know save her and make everything right and then she's very uh, surprised when it turns out that he's not exactly the white knight that she thought him to be so it's basically just a series of their adventures and it's just so fun I really enjoyed it okay now this book this book is difficult for me to explain and I am putting this on here, but I am recommending it with caution. And it is Sky O'Malley, okay? So I went into this book. This book is as old as I am. I read this in a historical romance reading vlog that Jess from Peace Love Books was doing with a bunch of people. And uh, it was a time. It was a time. I ended up giving this book four stars. Part of the reason I gave it four stars was simply because I was literally in awe of everything that was happening in here and how invested in the story that I was. This has one of the most bonkers plots I have ever read in my life, and I cannot even summarize it in a paragraph. So much is happening here. But the basic gist of this is we are following Sky O'Malley, who is this raven-haired beauty who finds herself in some really terrible situations and then finds herself getting out of those terrible situations only to be put in some more terrible situations. I will say this is absolutely a bodice ripper. There are consent issues galore there is a uh, sexual assault on page so this book I would I would I would compare the level of trigger warnings in here to like a modern day dark romance as in like you're gonna have the same type of things it's very very different it's written in a very different way but you're gonna have a lot of topics like that come up and I I just found myself so compelled to continue reading Sky's story. I wanted to see how she got out of this mess and how she got a happily ever after. But I was also really impressed with just like her indomitable will. Like every time something happened to this woman, she would rise up again and move forward. And I just was like, wow. So I recommend this because I think that it is one of the funnest reading experiences that I've ever had, not because the book is fun, but because of what was going on and how I felt like I had never read anything like it before. So I don't know. I think if you are okay with the trigger warnings in here and you want to read like a very old bodice ripper, like I would recommend this because it was a, it was, it was, it was a good time. And I was half the time I was like, what just happened? It was fantastic. This is this is one of my favorite books now, not because the romance is very swoony and not because I think it's super well written, but just because this was a heck of a ride reading it. And I have started collecting all of her books and I want to read more of them because this is a talented author. Like, what? 
<laughs> it was it was a time. Okay, the next book that I have to recommend is Love in the Afternoon by Lisa Kleypas. Now, this book is definitely not a book that's flying low under the radar at all. Like, everybody knows about the Hathaway series. It's a wonderful historical romance series. I love all of the books. This one is probably my second favorite. It's the last book, book number five only behind Mind Till Midnight, because truly I feel like Mind Till Midnight is kind of a perfect example of a historical romance. I love that book so much. Anyway, so in Mind Till Midnight, book one, you see the whole Hathaway family, and you meet Ber Beatrice, who is the heroine in this book, and you see that she is a little bit unusual, that she has this affinity with animals, and she doesn't quite fit in. She has an issue with stealing things, and it's she's just a very interesting character. So I was really curious about what her romance was going to look like, and this book ended up being one of my favorites in the whole series. It's an epistolary romance, and the first part is letters that she is writing to her friend's fiancé, but she's posing as her friend because the hero, Christopher, goes to war, and war starts to change him who he is. He's, he realizes he's going to come back, and he's going to be a different man than when he left. And Prue, Beatri Beatrice's <laughs> Beatrice's friend, I keep wanting to say um, Bertrice Small, Beatrice's friend is kind of like not wanting to write him back and not wanting to engage with him and she wants to get out of this relationship. So Beatrice takes it upon herself to write these letters to Christopher so he has something to hold on to, so he has something positive in his life to get back to. And, but she doesn't sign them as Beatrice, she signs them as Prue. So she starts falling in love with him, he starts falling in love with her, and when Christopher comes home, he wants to, he believes he's gonna have this great relationship with Prue because she wrote to him this whole time. And he comes home and Prue is like, absolutely not, I didn't write to you. So it's a very complicated relationship dynamic, but it is so sweet and emotional and very, very beautiful, and I really enjoyed the way that they worked through that. I didn't know that you were the one, you kept, one who was writing me, you kept this a secret, and it was just really beautiful. I loved it so much, and I think that I, I think that you could read, honestly, if you really wanted to, you could read any of these out of order. I feel like most historicals are written in that way, where it's not like a cliffhanger. You're just maybe missing out on backstory of the characters, but this series is so delightful. If you haven't started it, or if you haven't finished it, like I would highly recommend it, because book five, one of the best ones in the series. Okay, so this one is a little bit of a unique historical, and I honestly don't ever hear anybody talk about it, and it is The Prince by Catherine Ash. This is actually the last book in this... Ah! The last book in the Devil's Duke series, and I really enjoy the series. I think Catherine Ash's writing, again, is a little bit different than your typical historical romance. Like, it doesn't read like an Eloisa James, it doesn't read like a Tessa Dare, it doesn't even read like a Sarah McLean. Like, her words are rich and beautiful, and she has a really elegant and classic way of writing a historical romance that feels very immersive to the time. Like, it feels that level of realistic, and I find that just so beautiful. I also really love how she builds her romances over time. Like, it's never anything that is, like, hitting hitting you right from page two. It takes some time to build up. They have some things to work out. They have, like, social constructs, things that are keeping them apart, and I just, it just works for me really, really well. So this book is unique because our heroine wants to be, like, the first female doctor admitted into this, uh, or student admitted into this, like, surgeon school, but they're not allowing women to be in there, so she dresses as a man to get in there. She is neurodivergent. It's on the author's website stating that she is neurodivergent, and she is so desperate to get this done. She's a very brilliant woman, but she can't quite make it work without having somebody help her. So the prince, I believe his name is Zayadin. He is a long lost prince. He's Middle Eastern. He is also a very famous portrait artist. And the first time that he met the heroine, he drew her from memory and he got everything right except for her lips. And now he's like focused on her lips and can't stop thinking about kissing her. So when she asks him for help because he's in a unique position to help her, he says, okay, I will help you. I will help disguise you and hide you and get you into that school. However, you have to sit for me so I can paint you as a woman. And it is just very beautiful and emotional and just honestly, it was so great. And talking about it just makes me want to reread it right now. Also, the hero is disabled. So it's just a fantastic romance. It's very unique. It's not like anything that I've read and I adored it. It was great.
Okay, so the next book that I have to talk about is Not the Duke Starling by Elizabeth Hoyt. Now, I'm a huge fan of Elizabeth Hoyt. I love her Maiden Lane series. I love her other two series. I think that she is a fantastic writer, but I don't ever feel like people are talking about the series that she's working on right now. So this book is Not the Duke Starling. It's the first book in her new series, The Grey Court. It's a Grey Court novel. That's the name of the series, Grey Court. And basically, this book is about our heroine. She's part of a group of women called the Wise Women. They're secretive, and, and they do a lot of, like, helping women find justice and things like that The with the men in power who are kind of, like, pushing them down or doing them wrong. So it has a little bit of a feminist bent there. So she has a bit of a vendetta against the Duke of Harlow because he is the man who is responsible for destroying her family. And this woman can hold a grudge. Like, she is out for vengeance. So one night, they find themselves at a ball, the Duke and the heroine. Heroine. And he, the Duke walks in and he recognizes this woman and she, he knows that she is the only one who has a secret about him that could destroy him. He is there to find the person who is blackmailing him and he's going to try and bring them down. However, he ends up getting ensnared with the heroine and, you know, a whole bunch of plot things ensue. So like typical Eliz Elizabeth Hoyt style, this has a great plot. It's got really good mystery. It's very steamy. It's very romantic. And I just really, really enjoyed it. And I hear we're going to be getting book three next year. So I am very excited about that because it's been a long time since we've had an Elizabeth Hoyt book. So this series is really good. If you liked her Maiden Lane series, this is sort of a spinoff of that. And I would definitely recommend picking it up. Okay, now this book is one that I I talked about a lot when I first started my channel, but I haven't talked about it recently and I want to because it's fantastic and I just think that more people should read this book and this series specifically. And it is Baron by Joanna Shoup. So this is actually Joanna Shoup's first uh, Gilded Age romance. It's set in New York. It is a story all about these people in New York at the time. Like the hero in this book is a railroad baron. He is running for a political office with, he wants to be the lieutenant governor, the man who's running for governor. He's trying to make sure doesn't get entrapped in scandal or anything like that. And he finds out that the governor who is running, his run, you know, his partner, that he finds out that he has gotten involved in Madame Zolikov's. Um, she basically does like seances. She, <laughs> she predict, tends to predict the future. She's an entertainer, but presenting it as reality as was, as happened at the time, you know, and her name is actually Ava. She is taking care of her younger siblings because her parents have passed away and she's trying to make a living. And this is a way that she has found to make that living because she's gotten famous and people know who she is and she's getting a lot of money doing these seances and things like that. However, Will is not going to let this governor have any scandal touch him and ru that ruin their chances of getting elected. So he goes to Ava and says, hey, I need you to stop messing with this governor. I need you to stop working for him. We both know this is a sham. He can't have scandal touch him and you are prime for scandal. And she's like, absolutely not. This is my meal ticket. I need money to support my family. So this plot is interesting. The characters are interesting. Buttoned up Will, this is also book two in this series, by the way, you see Will in the first book and he is un insufferable. Like I hated him. So watching him and knowing that I didn't like him from the first book and watching him like be drawn to Ava and the gestures that he does for Ava and her family while never admitting that he loves her and then crumbling to the point where he will literally do anything for this woman was one of the most satisfying hero redemptions that I've ever seen in my life. I adored it so much. I felt like this book was honestly perfect and it's in probably, probably this is one of my like top three Joanna Shoops. Like I just love it so, so much. So if you like Joanna Shoop, even if you don't, I would still recommend starting this book because I think this is very unique and very different for a Joanna Shoop and it's just so good. So, all right, those are the books that I have to recommend for you all today. These are some of my favorite historical romances that I feel like I don't talk about very much. So hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, if you have a historical romance that you feel like doesn't get attention it deserves, please leave it in the comments because I would love to check it out and I'll see y'all in my next video.